This book is by Mary Smith. Yeah, she's been at this for a long time. I mean, this book was published in 2011. That's like proto-internet nowadays. This book is all about social media marketing, how to connect on a human level, not so much getting your numbers up, but getting a quality connection. In chapter zero, it, it pulls up the social graph, which is essentially your numbers across all internet platforms. And that's you being a node in common throughout all of these social media um, platforms. It's better said that you connect with people through social media. So you don't just know them on Tinder or whatever, you know them also on Spotify, I guess. The question becomes, what do I want the end result to be? Who, you know, if you're a business, who is my target audience? And there's other works, other books you can use to draw that stuff. I would definitely search that for its own thing. As you gain your target audience, you will then use them to inform more about the people that you want to meet. And there are some other like um, questions that she, or objections, I should say, that she uh, speaks to, which is mainly objections for people who are old school business heads that don't wanna have to go through, like like for me, honestly, I don't wanna have to learn TikTok. You know what I mean? That's, that's weird to me. The whole thing seems weird to me, but that's not an excuse to take advantage of that platform. You know what I mean? That's like, they have pretty good reach Everyone's using it. I'm kind of being a sucker for not going on there. She addresses some of those things, yada yada. And also she addresses um, how to be socially aware, which is, you know, manners. She gives you tips about how to watch what you say, how to not be socially tone deaf online, and generally how to be careful, how not to, nowadays you would say get canceled. But I honestly, I think um, in terms of cancel culture, like I know a lot of people worry about that. I know I worry about that. Uh, maybe Jay Maddox, maybe Working Man Reads definitely worries about this, but to me, it's, that, that's kind of silly because cancel culture really is more about getting away with crimes, you know? If you have the wrong opinion, you'll still have a crowd. But if you're like a criminal, you have a, a much smaller bandwidth of, of a community that would still accept you. How she describes it is very basic to the point where I would say that if you are looking for something about how to deal with hecklers, look for a comedian that you admire. Don't go to this book for the nitty gritty because it will only give you like how like John Q sample should react to an internet heckler, not how you should react to an internet heckler, which will be different for your goals and for who you are as a person. And this might be just something that I do because I am so sensitive to like people talking out the side of their necks and me talking out the side of my neck, but I'm always like listening for double and triple meanings and things. But this might be something that you could use um, if you don't know about it. But she, but she says in chapter two, the new business skills everyone needs, always check for hidden meanings, uh, things spoken or, or texted that, you know, have subtext that you might not know about or might not recognize up front. Slow down, read it real slow, and find out how could this be interpreted, you know? Don't go super hot off the cuff with it because that's how you get caught up. So definitely be cool. Most of the book can be summed up like that, just be cool. The entire time I was reading this book, I kept thinking about Noah, um, who you probably know. Everyone who reads it must converse, and this guy converses with everyone. Who freaking reads? He'll probably watch this video even though he doesn't freaking read nonfiction, I don't think. Or he doesn't read like, you know, pop marketing trash. Um, this isn't trash, Mary. I'm just making a point here. But he's doing that because he knows me and he's nurturing a relationship, you know? And he knows a lot of you. And if I go on your channel, he's probably there already, you know? I don't know too many people that he doesn't know. But that's him. You know what I mean? That's not because of any, like, I thought, I thought at first I was special, like, oh, I've made a friend, look at how great I am, but no. That's not me being an incredibly magnetic, insufferable hipster. That's him being a social uh, internet maven. And he's just cool. Like, I've, I've, never, I've never seen Noah call someone out their name, you know, talk about someone when they weren't there. You can pretty much learn anything in this book from just watching Noah and doing what he does.
frankly. But most of the things in this book are like towards like the milk toast crowd. So if you're someone like me who has to worry about like scaring people, you have to translate the book. But definitely keep a grip on your core values. As a business, those core values should be based upon what your core values are as a person. And again, don't go to this book for that. She also brought up this interesting example of something called Hollywood Squares. Essentially, who do you want to meet? You know, everyone on the internet is just right there, right where you are right now. Go up and say hi, they're right there across the room. It's going to have to be slow. This isn't an overnight game. You have to like, I guess, get warm to people and read the room, you know? If you have that goal, it's going to be a long-term goal anyway. So just do it. And since we're all on the same platform doing the same thing, you, me, you know, 14 year olds selling shoes or whatever, like we're all amassing the attention of the other people on the internet. That attention is its own value. So even if we're just among friends here, people on the outside of this circle want to be in this circle and we're in, you know? And I was thinking about this as I was like finishing the book. I have a cousin who does really amazing heavy metal. He does like anime and video game covers as well as his own solo project. He actually worked with the Doom Choir for the, I think Doom Eternal. He, he recorded there as a vocalist in the choir. And I was thinking like, just like, you know, I know him. I have people in my circle here who like metal who don't know him. So I could just say, here's a person you might like and let that be that. I think that's maybe the largest aha moment. Just making friends online is his own business. Also, she made a point to uh, encourage us to uh, strengthen our ties by meeting each other offline, which is absolutely true. We'll give each other other top of mind people with better quality connections because our understanding of each other will be stronger. And that also dovetails with being friends across platforms. I think it plays out the same uh, at any level of connection because the thing is, is to connections with key players. Uh, people who have themselves large connections, large followings of people who know each other. It's almost like um, like a dandelion, you know? Since the stems of the dandelions may know each other, then all the little spores also have these connections between each other. I mean, you know, you know what it is. There'll be some people in the comments that you know and some people in the comments that you don't. So it helped me to really understand like what I'm doing here with this whole internet thing. I gave it three stars because of its value, but also it's a little bit outdated and, and, and not necessarily for me, but I definitely can, used it. Yada yada, that's probably it. Take care, everybody. Peace.